Hello, there we are. How to make sure I hit the record. Hello, hello everybody. Uh, so nice to be back on uh, after a nice little break there through the holidays. Uh, this is Audrey live and it's Thursday, January 12th, 2023. I can't believe I'm saying that. 2023. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah, where has the time gone for sure? So um, just looking forward to getting back in the swing of things and sharing uh, lots of creative ideas. And we have some wonderful live guests for you over the next couple months uh, to share all their wealth of information with you and also some of the projects that they'll be teaching at the Art Waves Live Spring Show. So welcome again, Audrey DeYoung, Audrey Live, and uh, great to be back. Uh, our guests today, our two live guests today, are uh, Beth Wagner and Sylvia Russell. And uh, Sylvia, it's her first time on the show, so we're really excited for that. And Beth's been with us before, and, and we're so looking forward to having her uh, with us and share all of her knowledge for uh, the decorative painting and the crafting industry. So just make sure that... Um, when you're on, we love to hear from you. Tell us where you're from, uh, any questions that you have of the, of the guests or anything that they're doing. If they're demonstrating something and you have any questions, please ask. I will be monitoring uh, the chat there. So we, uh, we always love to hear where you're from and, and what's going on in your life. So that would be wonderful. Also, if you, um, you can always see the show again on uh, our Facebook page there uh, and also on our YouTube channel. We usually have it up within a week and uh, so you can go over there as well to uh, to see some of the things. If you've watched it and you're like, oh, I want to see that again, you can come back and view it. So um, anyway, I, it's New Year's. Hard to believe. Um, I don't know if you guys do New Year's resolutions. I typically don't do New Year's resolutions. Um, just something that we don't typically do. But this year, uh, my husband and my daughter, Corey, and I, we all kind of said we're going to work together. It's not really a resolution. It's just kind of a, a statement, I guess, that uh, work together to uh, maybe eat a little more healthy, uh, lose a few pounds that we're, we're just wanting to, to get a little bit healthier and uh, do a little more walking. And also, you know, Peter and I, we both reached our 60s. I turned that big 6-0 last year. And you start to realize, you know what, uh, you need to keep things in order and you need to be walking a bit more um, to stay active longer uh, into retirement. So a few suggestions. They said uh, some creative resolutions, so to speak, that you can make. Um, would be to try and finish all those works in progress. I know we all have them. We have, I have a bunch, I believe, around this room here of mine. And uh, just to get them out, try to find those. I know sometimes I have the piece of wood and I'm like, where's the pattern? I have a couple of those. I don't even know where the pattern is. Um, <clears throat> so try to finish those works in progress. And that being said, I'm kind of thinking what would be a really good idea if you're working on something and then you just can't finish it, maybe write on the back who the author was, like who the designer was, and even maybe tape the pattern to the back of the piece. I think I'm gonna to try to do that. That's a really good idea. I just came up with that, but yes, that's a good idea. Um, it's, and uh, as well to use up your stash. You know, we have different pieces there. Maybe there's nothing on them. And you're thinking, ah, oh, you know, I'm gonna get those out and start working on some of them. And a good idea, um, is to sign up for classes. You know, you have the Zoom classes that you can use your own piece. Art Waves Live Spring Show is coming up. You can use those pieces. Uh, you don't have to purchase anything from the teachers. You use what you have around. Another one is teach somebody else a craft. Uh, I bought my granddaughter, Daphne, uh, one of these latch hook kits for Christmas. And I know, you know, it's the one where you put the little latch in and then it's like a rug hooking, latch hooking type thing. And I used to do it when I was younger and quite enjoyed it. Uh, so bought one for her. So last week when my, my uh, girlfriends were all over and we were painting or knitting or whatever we do together, uh, she was still home from school. So she sat down and we taught her how to do it. And now she's doing really well, eight years old. And she's out there doing her little latch hook. So something like that, teaching grandchildren or just teaching other adults. 
Um, document your creative progress. I think this is something I might start doing. It says, this is actually a good one. When you are working on a piece, take a picture of it. Uh, this also records the date that you completed it. Uh, you could add them to your own private Pinterest board if you have one, or maybe in a journal. I think that's kind of neat because sometimes you look at pieces and you, you forget, um, you know, when you did it or, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, and then at the end of the year, you can see all your accompli creative accomplishments throughout the year. So it's something you maybe can add to if you already do journaling, you could add it to your journal that, you know, when you finish a piece, you take a picture, you put it in there and just write a little something about that piece. I think that's a really neat idea too. Uh, try a new craft or workshop. So, you know, try something new that you've never done before. Uh, you never know, you might like it. I know I've had a couple of different times that I've, I've tried different crafts. Um, and it's like, yeah, I like that, but I, I don't, you know, maybe it's like, okay, you know what? I like it. I did it, but I don't want to do it anymore. But there's other ones that I've kind of started and then really enjoyed. Uh, and then it's something that you can continue on and it's just a different way to uh, a different creative outlet, so to speak. Uh, start a journal. This is something that I think about every year. And I think I talk about it every year. And this year, this is going to be the year. And I think it's just a combination of two or three of those things that to write in the journal, even if it's just once a week, it doesn't have to be every day, but just to be writing down different things that happen within your life. Because as you get older, and it's not all of us, I mean, some of the younger ones out there are like, well, I don't have that problem, I don't forget. But you know what, later on in life, it might be really nice to look back in your journal uh, to see how things were when you were 40 or when you were 50 or when you're in your 60s. Uh, so kind of a neat idea is just to write things in there of what's happening in your life or within your children, grandchildren's lives, with your friends. And then to add to it this idea of um, your creative progress that you've done through the year. Um, some people could probably fill up two or three journals in a year. I, I definitely couldn't. I do a lot of creative things. But... Um, knitting squares. My granddaughter will ask me, why were you knitting so many squares? I'm always knitting squares. Well, I gave them each a, oh, I was supposed to bring that today. Darn. Um, I gave them each a lap gan. So I just knitted squares, all different colors and, and uh, gave one to each of my grandchildren for Christmas. So that's why I was knitting so many squares. Um, some journaling ideas, uh, uh, which I thought were really great. So I wrote them down to share with you is to write down your goals every day or say every week what you want to accomplish um, journal three things you are grateful for so maybe you know just could be something as simple as just grateful that my daughter came over today and we had a cup of tea or that i found out with my friends today and had a great lunch journal your problems and your stresses sometimes it's good to write those things down and uh you know just kind of get them out there on paper um, and you know, even something to about that. So what was the best thing that happened today or what best thing that happened this week? That kind of is kind of a nice way too to, to, uh, add a thing that you can add in your journal. And of course, all you creative people out there, you know, doodling, uh, there's Zentangle, there's all sorts of different things that scrapbooking, uh, that you can put within a journal as well. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's just for yourself. Um, but you know, it is a really great idea. Um, I think we're just going to get right to our first guest. I'll talk about uh, the Art Waves online spring show later on, a little more detail, but I think we're going to get right to our first guest today, and it's Beth Wagner will be with us this morning, or this afternoon, this morning, for some of you, if you're out west, I guess. Uh, Beth has had a longtime love of art and design. She is a graduate of the Fashion Institute of Technology and worked for many years as a fashion illustrator in New York City. She began giving painting lessons in retail stores as a Creativity and Michaels. Uh, Beth soon expanded to giving lessons in her home studio with, while creating original designs. She also owned and operated a mural and furniture painting business, specializing in residential and commercial work. I'm just gonna bring Beth on here a minute. Uh, I think this is the one I want. There we go. <laughs> Beth has been published in various magazines, online publications, and books. She presently teaches locally and travels to chapters and conventions regularly. Beth thoroughly enjoys teaching and designing projects for decorative painters. Uh, Beth always encourages creativity in her students. Beth has recently moved to a new home in South Florida. Hello, Beth. 
Hello, how are you? There you are. Good. Awesome. Yeah, we um and, and I don't know why it took so long to connect to me today. Usually we don't have that difficulty. No, but that's okay. <laughs> but here I am. <laughs> I finished I finished reading your bio and you were there. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that was perfect timing. Maybe this other one, I'll just put back in the waiting room, and I couldn't remember which one I had to bring on. There we are. Then I'll bring that other one on when we go to the demo. How's that sound? Okay, well, we'll try that. You know, I'm not very good that way, but um, happy <laughs> to be here. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. And one of the interesting facts that you had that I thought was quite neat is you're getting ready to teach watercolor on a cruise through yes. Australia. You yes, see? well, I've been all over the world. It's just such a lucky uh, that I was picked to do this. And I um, work on several different ships, and I've been to Russia, and I've been to Africa, and I've, I've been all over the world. Wow, that's it is amazing. Fun. I love it. And I teach little watercolor classes, and other than that, I'm a guest. <laughs> so that's amazing. That's like is, a dream, dream job. You got it. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And I love every minute of it. And I have a friend who teaches jewelry now. She comes with me. So they get both jewelry and painting. Wow. That's lovely. Very, love very nice. Yes. yes. Perfect. Perfect. Now, so what did you do over the holidays? Is there something that... Or... No, actually, well, you asked, you thought of two, I thought of two things. You asked about 2022. Yes. Do you know the nicest things, and I am not patronizing, that happened in 22, Audrey was being a part of Art Waves. Aww. I sincerely mean that, and I very rarely had Canadian students, and this time, I had only one American, Wow! and I had a lot of Canadian students, and it could not have been more than more of a pleasure. Oh, well, thank you. That I'm like, I, I have tears in my eyes. That's well, and I mean here. it sincerely. I'm not. Oh, well, thank and then you so Christmas, much. Just um, very quietly. A lot of relatives come down. You know, everyone loves Florida in the winter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't come in August, only in the winter. Yeah. Uh, and my daughter has two little children, seven and nine, and they got a puppy for Christmas. And I absolutely love animals. So Fred is now my third grandchild. <laughs> and we had lots of fun with family and Fred joined in. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Very, very yeah, nice. It's very nice. Now, where do they live? Do they live close by you or? Well, actually, my daughter only lives a half a mile away. Oh, perfect. For years, Audrey, Lauren was down here. She's been down here for 10 years. And I was in New York. And I kept saying, it's not supposed to be that way. The grandmother supposed to be in warm Florida and the children should be in New York and then finally I had you know a fire and I left and I had to make a decision and I said why not go to Florida yeah I'm one of those people who actually loves the weather even in the summer yeah 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 all yeah. good good, yeah, all good. good. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome very very good yes, um thanks. so what are some things that maybe have you been working on okay well creatively I guess so to speak anything uh different or well, new or well, I think I've got some different designs and two things that I'm going to be teaching. I have put away so well that I can't find now. Okay. And I was going to show them to you. So instead, I'll show you some other things. I okay. do Virginia Beach every year for a week. The class is full, but sometimes, you know, people at last minute can't come. But I thought I did some different things this year. So... Oh, this those are is, cute. Yeah, I'm calling it Summer's Coming because it's the last week of March. And they will get both patterns, but we'll paint one. I'll let them choose. Oh, and, so they're, and we do design day, which, you know, is my very favorite thing, yeah. to have people bring out their own creativity. Oh, wonderful. And then this is another one, a Christmas oh, beautiful. Cup, a Noel teacup. Now, are these and, ones you do in person or you do them online? This or? is in person. And we stay at the greatest little hotel right on the beach. Oh, and we keep all of our supplies in the art room that overlooks the ocean. Oh. And I can't tell you what a great group of ladies. Some of them have been coming for 14 years. Wow. And then we get new people every year. Yeah. And it's from New England, from Florida, from out west. So, And everyone, not because of me, because of the camaraderie, has the best time. Yeah. And so much. I shouldn't even be paid, but I will take 
this is another one. And Brenda has actually made the stencil for this. Oh, gorgeous. So That's we'll be learning beautiful. not only the stencil, but to center and work out. And students can bring different sizes. Again, oh. I like creativity. Yeah, that's amazing. Another one. And then the last one, and they can do this either on a tote or on a canvas. But oh, we'll be doing that for them. Lovely. Yes. Oh, that's and... really nice. It's nice to have things that are usable as well, right? Yeah, oh, totes, you know, all the way. And then this is an extra pattern that they will receive. Oh, nice. And we'll be talking about monograms. Yep, yep. Oh, so that's perfect. Virginia Beach. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's great. But I don't want to take too much of your time either. Um, but I would like to show my classes. I was just going to say. The yes. ones for Art Waves? For Art Waves, absolutely. Yes. Um, and I did, of course, make, if I can ever get my camera to go down, I did make a whole little chart so that everybody Perfect. could see my class. Well, I'm going to bring in your iPhone here. All right, let's see. Oh. Oh, you are a wonder. I thought I was going to have to do this. No, it's a touch of a button. There you go. Oh, so easy when you know what you're doing. It's when you don't know what Brenda had. I mean, uh, Sue had me all set to try this. Now, let's see if I can just set it up. Okay, are you switching to it? Yeah, I'm going to switch to it. There we go. <gasps> Oh, yay. And awesome. No one it worked. It is with me. So here are my classes. Let so you just... have class 101, which is the spring bouquet. Right. And I will show that first. Yeah, sure. That would be great. It has a companion piece. And I will explain. Oh, this is so big. It's going to be hard for you to see the whole thing. Oh, my goodness. This is my six-hour class. Wow. And the reason it is so long is we do a lot of interesting effects the boarding in the background of course hydrangeas and my loose leaves and then we do that old technique of candle waxing to get the grain look oh that's gorgeous so it takes some time but i want to show you the most one of the most popular pieces i've ever taught was the winter bouquet which is framed and i think what I plan to do, Audrey, is to do one for every season because my oh. students at home like that and they oh, change gorgeous. them with the season. And that's available on, I think, Etsy or whatever. But that, those two, and then hopefully there'll be a fall and a summer one. So that's my first class, Perfect. 101, the spring bouquet. The next class is Rose Theory because people are afraid of roses. <laughs> have a technique and you've heard the story I was a fashion illustrator then a muralist and then I tried to paint the rose and I almost had a temper tantrum these are my roses which as you can see are quite loose and they're all based on a cone and hopefully if we have time I will demo that and I love teaching roses and I do them in all different colors I can do a monochromatic, a white great way to teach them here. I think this is something I demoed last time, maybe with you, Audrey. I yes. think so, yes, yes. Look, yes. look familiar? Yes. And then these are just a different, I did it on a suitcase at a convention, and these are just various things that it was done on. And that one is and on the Thursday yeah. from 10 till 2, so, yeah. Correct. Correct, Thursday tension. So anyways, anyways, and everyone will get, I work from this worksheet and that's what breaks it down and hopefully makes it doable. I think the very good thing about this is you can paint a rose this big or you can paint a rose as tiny as my fingernail. You don't need a pattern. You just need to learn the cone technique. Yeah. So that's my rose class, and you said the time. And here I painted this this morning, literally, in about, I don't know, five minutes? Oh my Ten goodness. at most. Ah, but, you, but you have to practice. I mean, I don't, it doesn't just go no, like that. <laughs> no, no, no. You've been doing this for a few years. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> as, as soon as I got over my temper tantrum and came up with the design. Now, this piece, this is on Friday from 10 to 2, is one of my most favorite things I've ever done. 
and I'll tell you why. Van Gogh, oh, it's going to be hard to see the whole thing. Van Gogh is my favorite, and Monet are my favorite artists. And I saw this quote, I dream of painting, and then I paint my dreams. Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh. Beautiful. And I think for, I did it on a toad, of course, I do everything on toads. But would this be beautiful for an, uh, an art room, a painting room, a studio? And done on a canvas. Yeah. It is just, I, love it. I, 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 you know, I don't often say, oh, I just love my work. I love it because of the whole sentiment of Van Gogh. And he, you know, he was such a tragedy and such a brilliant man. And I love his work. So I just think this is a fun, doable, um, even, I wouldn't say a beginner, but someone who had less experience absolutely could have fun doing this piece. It's mostly patterned. And then there's a little bit of loosey-goosey, you know, I have to do that. And then great printing, which we'll talk about lettering. Oh. So that is... A lot of people are afraid of that lettering, you know. Oh, people are very afraid of lettering. And there's a few tricks to lettering. Yeah. First of all, a very good brush, and I only use a number four flat for this size lettering. And it's giving yourself guidelines, so important. I love to letter. Um, okay, and then my very late, that was Friday, 10 to two. And then Saturday, I love doing collage looking pieces. So this is a collage and then a frame, but you don't have to do a mat. You could just do it on one piece. But I love painting on mats lately. And of course, a variety of stencils only makes class more fun. And of course, I'm that Dutch. So this one is like my absolutely favorite piece. So it has the two lines, and it has the Delft blue um, okay. line work with the column okay. strokes. As soon as I saw them, I'm like, oh my goodness, that's something that I would see in Holland or that I would, you know, would mm -hmm. definitely be a Dutch mm -hmm. inspired piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never thought about that. Um, and again, as I heard you saying, Audrey, I am a very loose painter and I do encourage that. And you can see, but this is patterned. But yeah. look, I will encourage you to just have fun with it and just stroke your paint brushes. Yeah. So that is on Saturday in the evening. I guess you know I don't date a lot, Audrey. <laughs> it's 3 to 7 p.m. on Saturday. It will be so much fun. I'm so pleased to be a part of this. Oh, we're so pleased if to you have haven't you. If you have a class, and not only with me, ladies and gentlemen, Audrey assembles the best collection of teachers and with so many different um, talents. So I'm so happy to be a part of it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and so what so are you I, going to demo for us today? Well, what shall I do? You know, people say to me, what, what do you see on this bed? What do you think? A rose, of course. <laughs> so I'm going Perfect. to demo a rose. And I had even put it on a board in case we couldn't work this out. And my rose is done with a cone. And I don't usually draw my cone anymore, but I'm going to. And the cone is to remind you that every petal has to return to a stem. And I like a flat brush. And I blend, I work on a wet palette. I know not everyone likes a wet palette. And I usually, I'll either do one color for a monochromatic rose, but in teaching, I definitely use three. And I will use poodle skirt pink. I use decor paints, a little Napa red and white. If you can just move, out. is it possible to move the board up just a tad bit? Yes, yeah, and you have to keep reminding me I'm so bad. I'm so bad. There we go. Now it's exactly. centered. That's perfect. And I'll just put out a little green in case we have time for leaves because I like to do very loose. My biggest complaint in florals often is the leaves are too dominant, too important. I just want leaves to be there as background for my flower. Okay, so here I go. And I do want to take just a minute to show this because it's so important. Here are my three colors. And I will pick up my middle value, which happens to be poodle skirt pink, and sweep it back and forth. Pick up white on one corner. I don't want to double load. And put it up on top and walk it down. Picking up Napa red on the other corner 
and walk it up. Every stroke that I will paint will be in this blend of color. I don't go all over the palette. I will keep coming back to this until I'm ready to highlight. So here I go. And I will do this quickly, but of course we'll do it much more, more slowly in class. So here we go. One, a little more white, I can see it already. And I'm right back into that spot. One, two, three. And notice I'm not neat. It is not little neat teeth because petals would never look like that. And I think it is two things that make my roses so popular because no two roses will ever look alike and mine look like real petals. And you can also do them in all different sizes. Every time I'm picking up, so one row, second row. Now I'm doing a little stuttered row. I'm working to the center of the rows. From here, now I'm going to close the second row that I painted. And it is chisel, chisel, back up to the top and pick it up and down. And you want to drop this. I don't even like, I went a little too high. I usually like it lower. And things can always be fixed. If you don't panic, things can be fixed. Now I'm doing the same exact thing to my first row that I painted. And I'm studying it my brush across. Now you can see every one of those petals give the impression of returning to the stem. And that is so important. Now I will give myself just a little oval because this is a three quarter view. If it, when I do do that rose, if we have time in the rose class, I will show you this one too. I only developed that about two years ago. You're looking straight down on the rose. Here you're looking at a three quarter angle, which is mostly what we see. So now these are the petals that are just opened and are standing up. We also probably will have time for the rose, but I have a technique for that too. So here I go. I am, this takes, this is a little more challenging and it takes practice. I am right at the top. I don't want them to go out straight. I don't want to drop them down here. I am continuing that pretty curve. So here I go, flat with a rotation, chisel. Flat with a rotation, chisel. Now it is rotate, 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 bring it up, come in. Rotate, 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 bring it up. Now I'm putting this little fifth petal in there. And when you do paint roses, we'll talk about all of this. You want to alternate odd and even number of petals or you will get a path right down the middle of the row. Since I had five, I'll now do four. And notice I leave spaces. I don't want everything to be so harsh and tight. It's amazing how many petals you can get in there with just one load. Yeah, I guess so. And your brush, and it's like what four or five, and it's the it's the um, wet palette. Your paint stain. Now I put a lot of paint on, but it's very thin. Um, yeah. yeah, and also um, initially I used to say, "Oh, you can start with as many petals as you want," and that was chaos. So for teaching purposes, I start with five. But I painted roses with 11 petals to start. And so we'll talk all about that in class. So here I go. And I'm going to drop down just a little bit. Flat, chisel. I could definitely use a little more white now. So I'm going to my white. Flat, chisel. Flat, chisel. It's the same stroke with less pressure. And now let's just let that be a little more opaque. And now I'm going to wipe my brush off as soon as I find my terry cloth. I'm not going to wet it, I'm just wiping it off. And this time I'm picking up just white separately and blending it out. Let me show you that too. So I picked up white, I'm out of my, my rainbow as I call it of color, and I'm just blending it over here because I want actually, to you don't actually wash your brush out no not at all very real I have I'm 
on a wet palette, my brush stays nice and damp. I would, mm, yeah, I don't wash it at all. I want some of that pink still in there. Yes, I can see why you need me moving up. Now I'm going to just chop a few little petals in here. And now I want to, again, these are the petals that are standing up. These are the petals that have fully opened. So now I want the petals that are pointing right at you. So I am doing chisel, pressure, pull it back up. Chisel, pressure, pull it back up. And I usually do between three and five. And these, so I have my standing up petals, my petals coming directly at me, and my petals that are fully open. And now with my, let's hope I have it here, liner brush. This I always talk about also. Um, we don't, after we've created this nice, loose, soft rose, we don't want a green, dark green ball in the middle. That only looks like a hat on top of the rose. What we want to do, and I'm starting with a light green and making it somewhat scattered. And then I will go to a very dark Green, have not cleaned my brush. And I will bring that down right along that front petal. And it's much more, um, let's get a little more dark in there. And I that helps sink that center down even more. I think one of the things that make my roses popular is that you look down into the rose. You may notice that some roses that are painted, just, and of course I use fingers all the time. Um, the centers look like they're shooting out rather than going down. So these look like they're going down. Let's give it just a quick, oh, and I'd love to show rose buds too, but we don't have time today. So we will do that definitely in class. Let's just have fun. You say they have to save something for class, right? <laughs> That's true. Well, we all will practice a lot and there'll be tons of questions and looking at it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. But Perfect. we'll just we'll just have fun putting some leaves in here. Of course, I leave my background and come out through my leaves, but that's all that's all just fun stuff. All right, so here we go. Now you certainly can go to a smaller brush at this point. I won't now I want to highlight my petals. And I never highlight the entire rose because to me that just flattens it back down. Yeah. I will do like a crescent highlight. So I will start, and I should pick up a smaller brush, but we'll just do this one. All right, so I'll start back here. A little bit of a highlight, and then a little bit here. I might even chisel a little, and then I will come forward. Just makes it pop right out, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah, and I actually, I would do this twice if we had the time, but look what it does to that rose. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And I think that took us maybe about 10 or 12 minutes. And again, and we don't have time now, I promise you ladies with the same technique and a number four flat, you could paint a rose this, this tiny on the end of your nail, all with the same technique, fewer petals, smaller brush. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it's all about. Beautiful. <laughs> Very nice. Awesome. Well, thank, right. <laughs> thank you. I do love teaching. Yes. Here, I'm just going to remove that spotlight a minute. I did have a question. Sue's asking, is the lettering freehand or stenciled? So I think that would be on the bag she was referring to. It is freehand, ladies, <laughs> but we will do it. We will have, a, because this is not a difficult design at all. So we will have time to do a little bit of playing with lettering because lettering is so important. Yeah. And um, again, a liner brush and a number four flat. And you will, let's show it. Oh, well, we can't. Just, well, I'll yes, you can it show it. Okay, I'm just trying to see when you know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm just going to spotlight it. Hold on. Okay. There we go. There we go. Perfect. I give myself the most important, in my opinion, thing in lettering is you need your good guidelines in uh, disappearing chalk or whatever but because this is so important and we'll talk about it all it's too much to talk about now and it's just very 
interesting. Um, if I have things that tip, I see I was very vertical, which ladies makes it even easier. Often I'll do things on the diagonal, but then you must make sure you have your diagonal lines. This is very, very simple. I know you don't believe it if you don't let her. But, um, and if you feel like you love the idea of you could stencil it, but I'd love you to try, even if you practiced your lettering on um, a piece of paper, paint your design on here and then we'll practice lettering on paper because it gives you so much more freedom when you can letter. Yeah. And of course, this is just my crazy sunflowers. Not yeah. as crazy as Van Gogh's, but uh, yeah. <laughs> That's my well, this story. Was just, yeah, just wonderful, wonderful to, to see the rose and and all the classes you're going to be teaching. And I know everybody will be excited to sign up for the classes. And well, thank a you. Lot of people they on. Can't do again, how much I loved my students last year. They were yeah. fabulous. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, quite a few are on and they're mentioning that they took classes from you and how much they enjoyed it. So, so well, uh, yeah. it should be fun as, along with learning. Perfect. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Beth. Thank you. For being with us and, uh, and showing us how to paint roses, which... Yeah, I love it. I, I just... want you in class, Rose. Uh, Audrey. Yeah, like... exactly. <laughs> You're a little too busy, I think. <laughs> I, yeah, that's. I try to do. I try to get in every now and then, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> I know. Thank you, Audrey. All right, take care, Beth. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a great day. You too. There we are. Well, that was amazing. I just love watching her. I mean, five minutes and she's got this amazing, beautiful, perfect rose. Yes, I need to take that class. <laughs> and it's just, you know, there's, like she said, there, you can do a simple rose or you can do a very complex rose, but you're you're learning the basics. And, and that Van Gogh or her, her bag there is just uh, beautiful. And that would be just a wonderful uh, piece to paint and, and to, to share with your, uh, your family and friends. So thank you, Beth, again. And thank you, everybody who's watching. It's wonderful to see. I can see lots of you on, I, I, a few names I see is Liz Garcia and Brenda Owen and Sue Potts, Linda, oh, there it went. So I, I see that it keeps changing. So I only see as people make comments, who's there. Uh, Marion Gould, yes, hi Marion. She does make it look so easy, doesn't she? Susan, thanks so much. Elaine from Missouri, Lois Ann from Bear, Delaware. Ah, and hi Judy, heart to you too. <laughs> That's my friend Judy Hampson, anyway. She's the one who does all the work for the convention, putting the catalog together for you. So we thank Judy for uh, for all the work she does the, in that as well. So anyway, our next guest, our second guest today is Sylvia Russell. I'm so excited to have Sylvia with us here today. She's a creative, fun-loving watercolor media artist and workshop instructor. Her art career began over 25 years ago when she uh, studied in the fine art faculty of University of Man Manitoba. She then became an artist in residence at the Canadian Mennonite University and taught drawing and painting through continuing education classes there. It's so interesting, all the background from some of these artists. It's just amazing. I love it. Uh, she loves to teach from her experience in nature while showing students easy and fun painting techniques. Her classes provide a nurturing learning environment for students so that they feel free to participate, to learn as a community, whether in person or online. Sylvia has taught in Canada, France, and the United States. Sylvia has also enjoyed an observable link between painting and healing in people's lives. She has participated in the Manitoba Artist in Healthcare, Newcomer Refugee Faculty, Personal Care Homes and Grief Share Programs. Wow. Where painting is offered as a reprieve from the difficulties of life's challenges, circumstances. I'm going to talk about that later. So this is a real quinky dink. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sylvia welcomes beginners to enter. I better let her in here. I'm just chatting away. Let me see. Where are you, Sylvia? There we go. Sylvia welcomes beginners to intermediates and advanced to enter into a class and enjoy learning painting together in a simple and fun way. Welcome, Sylvia, and thank you for joining us today. Let's see. Uh, are you there, Sylvia? Ah, oh, there she is. Hello. I'm here. <laughs> you there. You made it. Yes, awesome. amazing. I made it. So <laughs> thank you for having me, Audrey. Well, thank you for being with us here today. I'm really, uh, yeah, just 
a beautiful bio, you know, I really, how did you get into that uh, working with the uh, healthcare and, and the refugees mm -hmm. and that sort of thing? Tell us a little bit about that. You know, uh, just opportunities that have opened up along the way in my life through the people you meet and um, and just an interest, right? Uh, my own personal interest. I'm at a stage in life where I'm looking at what's uh, what are some meaningful ways to spend my life, and that's uh, taking the the skill of that I have, the skill set, and plugging it into some needy areas actually you know people that are hurting people that are in transition um whether physically mentally emotionally painting uh has been a real good bridge to help people through those processes as they yeah. process things you know yeah it's yeah. so true it's so true for sure um interesting fact you I, I wrote it down somewhere and i for some reason i don't have what was your interesting fact again about yourself Oh, uh, something positive that you yes. had mentioned. Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, in a review of the year, uh, one of the really fun things was, again, actually a woman who was fighting with some disability and wanted to paint sunflowers on her shed. And I, I heard about it through her husband at the printers. And uh, so I... I said, well, hey, I think I can paint a sunflower on your shed. So once we started working together on it, her ideas and then my skill doing it and his gardening, he this shed was in the middle of a beautiful, uh, lots of waterfalls he had set up in the flowers. Oh. I figured it was going to be my therapy to be <laughs> painting the shed. So, and it was, and so it was 40 hours of painting in the, listening to water, but yeah, you know, honestly, I didn't know if I could paint big, uh, and a mural kind of thing, but I just said, okay, well, it's just a canvas. It's just bigger. And, yeah, yeah. uh, so it was lots of fun and it really seemed to be, I became her hands. And so she, it was a very kind of moving experience for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. When, when things like that happen in our lives, yes, it's, it's certainly something that changes you or that just makes you think a different way Yeah, of sharing your talents that you, you have for sure. That's wonderful. Sure. Good, good. Um, and what are, you have a couple projects, things that are coming up pretty soon, some classes that you're doing, uh, yeah. you share those with us. I said, you send a few samples along. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it would be great to see them for sure. So I guess in May, um, I'm doing, I just want to do some daffodils because it's a good month to do daffodils. So I'm actually going to show it to you this. Am I going to show it to you? All right, we're having a little trouble with our studio stuff. So I'm going to get some help from my husband to do this. But starting with a single flower daffodils, but different uh, surfaces, how you can change it up and oh. use texture and stuff like that. Very and cool. then how you can change the color, um, actually just the color, uh, the colors you're using, you know, and different ways to get light into the daffodils. So I, you know, I do a four week series usually when I teach and I like to give lots of different options and kind of build to skills of people as we go along. So they, they learn different things, different, different techniques and hopefully come out with something they're enjoying. It doesn't have to be like mine, but just to learn, you know, and be support, get the support as you're learning and building those watercolor skills. Because watercolors it really has taken me years. I've been at this, I think it's over 30 years now. And I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. But I, <laughs> there's, there's so much to learn, you know. Yeah, so yeah. that's coming up in May. Hey, I'm actually said? doing yeah. one on people in March. And um, um, I don't really have that one here to show you, but um, that idea of learning, we're just learning different skills, building on one another, and then you end up on the, probably the second or fourth week with so a picture that's starting to come together and yeah. starting to understand things. And well, in the I fall, it out, um, so maybe I can show it. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. So doing people from behind and also like children, you know, at this stage of life where maybe have grandchildren and 
uh, shoot, getting them from the back is often easier than getting them from the front. So that that's kind of the idea. I have a grandson that, yeah, it's hard to get him in a picture smiling. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it helps him and it helps you as you do it. Right. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. and then, uh, fall, I, I like to introduce, um, how to do trees in a splashy fun way. And so I have this one, uh, do, 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 do like there, this oh yeah, so it's just neat. a really splashy fun approach and um yeah and hopefully I'll do something more for you Audrey maybe in the fall it'd be oh, nice to come together fun. and do that too so yeah, yeah perfect perfect so um are there is there any different types of things that you work on outside of like you watercolors that your main uh, watercolors it Audrey I I yeah. like other than sheds <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so uh so you know i i used to do paint nights and uh with acrylics I, with acrylics i've always gone with um actually i found it really helpful just to come in with a knife so this is my go-to with with acrylic uh usually um and so lots of abstracts i've done with that and and yeah it's fun but my watercolor is my main deal because um when i was sponsored by jack richardson i they gave me all these supplies and honestly like professional watercolor tubes. And then we put Yarka, they actually work, um, they import. And so they imported the Yarka set. Oh, okay. And so instead of Yarka in here, I put the professional Stephen yeah. Quiller generally or the Jack Richardson brand in there. Really a game changer when you have quality materials and also their brushes and honestly i'm not really sponsored by them anymore but i'm still benefiting and so <laughs> like these are some of the brushes they they've really um i only use four i only use four brushes and so you know honestly they just really were kind and we worked well together and so that's how students had success because they had good paint good brushes and and good paper like they even supplied Perfect. the paper at that point and we were doing that for about 10 15 years somewhere in there you know oh, wonderful. so and wonderful. I traveled with them so we I traveled for on with their materials and yeah. not for them but yeah representing them good good awesome well let's get to your projects that you're teaching at art waves okay and maybe Thanks. we'll um uh, did you want to show them all first before we get to a demo great could you help me you do we yeah, have the... so great Go ahead. uh yep yeah. so my husband's gonna help me here because for some reason windows had an update and we lost the studio so he's <laughs> you know things happen so he's just untangling this for us sorry about this guys that's okay no but problem he's coming around if i if he wasn't here i'd be totally lost so okay <laughs> great can you show us okay so here we go so here's this one coming up oh we're looking at your screen yeah could you bring it down oh there, there we, we go. go okay and i'm going to uh, okay pin you so there. Yeah, here's our splashy watercolor, and it's, um, there it is. <laughs> so that's the date and time and number for people who want to do it. And it's teaching people how to do flowers in a splashy, fun way, and even grass. You know, as a beginner, I was, I was befoozled on how to do grass. And so even something like that is fun and easy. Uh, when you know how, when you know how. And then I really have enjoyed um, teaching this. I did a single flower series and taught um, the country hollyhocks as part of that a long, well, a while ago. And so this is a more of a pen and ink approach with watercolor, which is great for beginners again, but intermediates too. You know, we just need a boost of something new sometimes. And it, it is a refresher. So yeah, so there's the number on that and uh, I'm just, and the time, there you go. Yeah. So, right. and you want it, I think, um, you know, the colors, I'm sorry, the colors aren't coming out very well here, but we're just, uh, yeah, trying to work with the Windows update that happened. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, 
Um, yeah, and usually I like to go along and give a little history of, you know, the, the hollyhock and tie that in with painting and make it a pleasurable experience for people. And so it's, it's really not, it's the whole person that's involved um, with painting. And uh, so that's why I got into, you know, the, the healthcare and all that with this. So this is something that's helped me um, doing this, just having a little color palette of my colors. And so I match it up with my set here. And that really has been a good tool for me. And I, I did it in layers so I could see, you know, light, medium, dark. And, and um, so anyways, just to give you that idea, that's helpful. And if you want a little demo, I, I'd like to offer you one. That would be wonderful. Of okay. course. So um, I thought I'd focus on um, instead of like when, when especially when you're beginning, we can be a little tight, you know? And like I talked about grass, I didn't know even how to paint grass, you know, in a loose, fun way, but also things like trees. So when I think of a tree, um, I can... I don't know, Greg, can you see this? Yeah. So here's my trunk and my limb. And it's a good start. And it has not a bad feel to it. And actually there's, you know, Tony Couch in this book called Watercolor, You Can Do It. Uh, he helped me kind of think this through with an acronym. And so I like to think of it as a BLT. <laughs> So a BLT is easy to remember and then a T on top. And so the trunk, which when I start from the base here, I can come up again this way and my trunk's getting thicker. And then I can come out here with a branch. And so I've got this idea of limbs, branches, and I don't often go into twigs, but BLT, you got your trunk, your limbs, your branches, and your twigs. So BLT with the T on top, I find that really useful. And then, you know, but if I wanted to make something that would be um, less uniform, I could start with some just spraying water in. Now I could use my spray bottle, but um, it's, as you all know, probably a spray bottle can be all like one, uh, it's not as controlled, right? It's sort of all over. Yeah. So yeah. just tapping in with a brush is a great start. So let's see what happens when I put the same color in and I'm gonna come up into that area and I'm gonna get a much more interesting tree because the water is gonna help me out. So already it's got just a little more movement to it and the water is going to, um, and I'm also even thinking, well, what about the light? If I put a sun over here and I can think about light, then I would probably come into the back end of this, with maybe just a little mix here. So this is where I keep, you know, this, these basic colors in my palette. Um, again, the colors are hard to see there, but uh, it becomes like a brown matter when I put um, a Payne's gray with a burnt sienna. Now I can come in and put more of a, a darker color onto that side. And it's adding a little more interest again. And I'm going to just come out. And I actually like to change brushes now and go into this little rigger brush. So it's it's longer and it's thinner. And I'm just going to grab it up and the way you even hold your brush. So if I held it at the very end and rather perpendicular to the paper, I'll get another different effect. And just playing around with your brushes to kind of get um, familiar, like they're friends. You know, friends take time to get to know. And your brushes are like that, too. But you can see the interest in this tree yeah, it's is there. And honestly, I'd love to just splash in maybe a little yellow with my green again mixing that color to make it a little more interesting and i'm just going to fool around and get some splashiness here and if it was spring 
I would probably put a little bit of rose color into it and tap in some reds in there, or this is where your uh, fall colors could come in. And I, I just could keep going here because it's so much fun. <laughs> so I'm just putting in uh, those colors and you can just see if we could get that over closer, Greg, um, how much more interesting that tree is uh, just because we let the water go in first. Oh, yeah. Yes. For sure. Now, what is, is that done just on a watercolor paper or? Yeah, this is yeah. 140 pound cold press paper, watercolor paper. Beautiful. Very nice. Sure. Well, it's That's fun, right? Lots of fun. Lots of fun and lots of different things that they certainly can learn uh, at the show with your classes. Great. Yeah. I'd like to see them. So I don't know if you want to see my face again, but Greg could probably sure. do that. Yeah, you might as well. <laughs> Flip you back Greg, around. Greg is awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, my there's his hand. Yeah. Okay, dear. Okay. There, there we go. go. Well, thank you <laughs> well, so much. That was wonderful. You're welcome. Very neat. Thanks. And we're really looking forward to having you with us uh, at the show. And uh, for people that are watching, uh, to make sure that they go to our website, www.c2cevents. Oh, dot yeah. com and you can look at the top spring show hello this is my husband <laughs> <Thank> you, <Yes>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. and you can see all of sylvia's classes there as well so <laughs> thank you so much sylvia you you're guys welcome have a great thanks day. okay bye-bye okay. yep bye-bye oh that was wonderful even with the technical difficulty that was fabulous sylvia thank you so much for showing us that and you know i it's just a tree, you know, but it was beautiful and just tapping on those colors with the green leaves and the, and the blossoms, just very, very beautiful. So uh, thank you so much, Sylvia. And uh, thank you, Beth, for sharing all your wisdom and your creative talent with us today. It's just wonderful. Really, really enjoyed it. So I uh, just wanted when when Sylvia was mentioning when I was reading her, I did read part of her bio, but obviously I didn't read it in depth. And and um, when she was talking about working in the health care and how, you know, art helps people uh, going through difficult times. Um, the last couple of weeks have been really heavy um, on myself. Oh, I wasn't going to get like this. Sorry, Verda. <laughs> Um, days are getting colder. The winter's here. We all start to feel a little shut in. I mean, we're lucky this winter. We haven't had a lot of rain or a lot of snow, I mean. But, uh, you know, you start to feel a little what they called cabin. Oh, what was it again? See, look at it's that 60s thing. Um, cabin fever, I think it was called. Yes. So, you know, you kind of get stuck. You're not getting out as much, not getting that sunshine. Um, and also there's just so much going on in the creative art industry and within a circle of people that I know that are dealing with a lot. And I just think about them daily and pray for them daily. Um, Georgia Dobbin, who has been ongoing with cancer and cancer treatments and surgeries, and she's just such a positive lady. And, you know, I see her posts and, and uh, it, it's so inspiring, you know, uh, to be positive and to keep being herself uh, humorous, uh, getting us through everything. Um, also thinking of our, our good friend, Wendy Faye, up there in um, just just by Sudbury, and uh, she's going to be going through uh, surgery on the 20th um, uh, with breast cancer. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just, yeah, thank you, Marion. Oh, cabin fever. I should look over here. People are helping me. <laughs> cabin fever. Uh, Wendy, you know, we're thinking about you and, and all of our love is going to you and, um, and we're just hoping uh, for the best for your surgery. Uh, think of my friend Verda, uh, one of my BBGs. We've been all together for like 30 years and her husband's in the hospital. And, uh, you know, it's a struggle, uh, you know, that they have to see their loved ones, what they're going through. And, you know, the, the daily uh, time and commitment um, that uh, the person who is ill and the family, what they deal with. And, um, yeah, it's just uh, daily struggles to get through it all. And how do they do it? How do you cope? Um, also, we've had a lot of people pass away um, within our circle as well. Uh, very recently, um, uh, three ladies from 
Ontario, uh, Betty Newhouse and Nancy Redford and their sister Linda Gregory always came to the shows. And we lost Linda this week, Linda Gregory. So we think of Betty and we think of Nancy and their families and all that they're dealing with right now. And also our West Coast gals, uh, they lost uh, Nicole Saloni. Um, she came to the shows uh, always with Barry Lynn Peters and a little group of friends of theirs and uh, just a wonderful lady, uh, always you know, coming to the desk and talking with us and showing their pieces, uh, always so kind and, uh, and giving. And uh, we think of, um, of Nicole and her family and her friends out there as well. Uh, also Sue Gate. Uh, who used to teach for us and and lives up, I believe, Kin Garden or Port Elgin. Not, uh, I think it's Port Elgin and Sue, uh, who just lost her mother before Christmas. Those are just a few that I know of, and I'm sure there's many, many, many more. And I'm I'm just you know mentioning those because those are the ones that I've seen and that I know of. Um, so just wanted to say right now that you know we're we're thinking of you and praying for all the different situations everybody's in. Um, yeah, you're right, Liz. She lived in Cambridge before, and now she's living up in, up. I know it's either Port Elgin, that area. So with all of this, just like Sylvia said, it's sometimes it's our creative energy as being creative that helps get us through these situations. Um, Liz, I know, you know, uh, you yourself as well are, are going through some, some difficult times and there's so many others. Um, Different ways to deal with illness or death of a loved one is is um, and to get through each and every day. Different things that maybe we can do. Here were just a few suggestions that I found that I thought I would share. I want to practice ways to relax. I think sometimes we just think we have to fill every single moment of our days. Um, but just taking time to relax and being alone, you know, and uh, and just thinking about, you know, thinking about memories or about your past or about your future or that sort of thing. Uh, share your feelings honestly with your family and friends. You know, they do, they do want to listen. And there's some that maybe don't, and you will know who those people are. But, you know, take that time uh, to talk to your family and friends about your situation. They're there to help you. They're there to go through it with you. Uh, keep a journal. We were talking about journaling before. And I think this is a really, you know, good thing, especially... You know, people that are in the hospital or, or if you're the caregiver, keep a journal of things that happen, you know, whether it's good or bad. Um, you know, I think it's, it's very um, therapeutic to be doing that and to be writing it down. Um, when faced with difficult decisions, make a pro, a pro and con list. Um, just to kind of put it out there on paper again and, you know, what are the pros, what are the cons in decision making? Uh, set aside time to be alone. So that's kind of goes with relaxing, but just set aside to be alone sometime as well. Um, remain involved with your work or your leisure activities as much as possible. You know, uh, it's difficult when you're going through a difficult time. Some people just don't want to be involved in anything. They don't want to see people, but you know, taking the time to have a little bit of a schedule, um, is probably good as well. Also, it's important to stay creative. You know, uh, being creative, I've always said that it takes your mind to another place. Um, it certainly um, sometimes just lets you be you, be, take, be that creative uh, place, uh, gets you to that happy zone. Um, also listening to music, you know, listening to music, reading a book, uh, all these things that, um, you know, can, can help you through these very difficult times. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that because it's just something that's been very heavy and i know that so many people out there um are definitely dealing with different situations and uh you know i just want to acknowledge them and those uh and that you know we are thinking of you so uh quickly just wanting now i see we're, we're getting way over here so i apologize uh, just wanted to make a quick note mention of course about the art waves uh online spring show so, which is coming up, um, really enjoyed having the two gals on today, Beth and Sylvia, sharing their project pieces with you. Uh, it's April 19th to the 23rd, and you can find all the, the classes are on our website, uh, www.c2, the number two, cevents.com, and click on the spring show. 
Uh, every other Thursday, we will come uh, live again on Audrey Live here and uh, bring to you all the different artists that will be teaching at the show. So our next show uh, will be in two weeks, which is January 26th. And our guests are Ann Hunter and Linda O'Connell. So we're looking forward. We've never had Ann on the show either. So looking forward to that. Uh, very, very exciting. Um, so I'm going to leave you today uh, with a video. I was kind of looking at or what, listening to music. And, and uh, I just thought that this video really uh, felt uh, inspirational to me. And I uh, just thought I'd share it with you. Um, so take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And uh, we'll see you again in a few weeks. Uh, I'm just going to stop the...